Hello, everyone. You know, if you ever get a chance to become a trustee for a large, wealthy corporation, and all you got to do is take care of a house and take care of some other things around the house, and you can change your life around, you would take it, right? I know I would. But after reading this book, you probably shouldn't because evil is afoot. <laughs> We're going to talk about all that right now. All right, so our book today is called The Plague Stones by James Brogdon. Uh, this came rec to, recommended to me via Twitter. And I got to tell you, man, Twitter is kind of killing it right now with these recommendations. Uh, quite a few of the books that I've already reviewed on this channel and quite a few more that I'll be reviewing here uh, very shortly all came as recommendations on the Twitter. And... Uh, it's always good when you can find a book that somebody says, you know, you're going to love this book, and then you actually do. Uh, I like that kind of thing. But this book uh, is fantastic. Uh, it, it's, it's got almost everything you would want in a horror novel. And uh, it basically concerns a family. And they're a poor family. They live in a kind of a tenement, rundown tenement, kind of apartment building. Uh, working class family, but still very poor. And one night they leave their, their teenage son home alone because both the parents have to work. And somebody breaks into the house while he's there. Now, even though he's a teenager, he's 14 years old, he considers himself kind of a badass, at least when he's playing video games, you know how that is. Uh, but this, uh, this home invasion leaves him shaken and, and battered. Because he gets pre beat up pretty bad, and uh, the bruises might heal, but he thinks he has failed his family because he, he always thought he would do better in a situation like this, and yet he let this, this intruder beat him up and take his family's possessions. And uh, he feels kind of bad, and he has, he's trying to process it. You know, he has a lot of trauma associated with this event. But shortly thereafter, shortly thereafter, the mother uh, gets word that a very distant relative of hers has passed away, and she has been chosen to live in a very luxurious part of town, kind of a, kind of a fenced-in town, kind of a walled kind of city within the city. Uh, and it's a very affluent area, and this could change their lives. They're going to move into a huge home that they never had before. Big backyard, beautiful neighborhoods. They're going to give the dad a job in his chosen field that comes with a pay raise. They're going to send the son to a, to a great school. Um, and this board of directors has chosen her because she is a family member of the person who last held the position who passed away. And so the job is hers. All she's got to do is sign a piece of paper. She'll become a trustee. Of, of, this, of this house, this almost mini mansion that they're going to move into, and all she has to do is take care of the, of the stone in the back. It's, a, it's almost it's just like a big uh, rock coming out of the ground. It's a big monument. Uh, it's supposed to have historical significance, and so it's very clear to her, and, very, and it's very important to the board that uh, she take care of it. She doesn't let anything happen to this stone, this monument. And in return, the board always emphasizes they take care of their trustees. And as long as she's, once she signs that paper, she is a trustee. And uh, so why not, right? She goes ahead and signs it. But we find out things are not as they seem here. Because throughout the town are different kinds of these stones, different kinds of these monuments. One is actually a part of a road that people drive and, and walk over. One is in a bar, actually, behind a bar, uh, uh, hidden into the wall, you know, attached to the wall. Of course, hers is in her backyard, uh, standing up from the ground tall and, and majestic looking. And they have a ritual, this little city within a city does, this little town. They have a ritual every year where they go and beat all these stones scattered throughout the town with a stick, and it's supposed to be symbolic. However, this is a horror book, so we know that's not true, right? Come on. 
<laughs> Come to find out, uh, there is a very evil, malevolent spirit, and it's a spirit of a, of, a, of a little girl. Now, most of the time in horror books, the spirit of a little girl might be something uh, you feel sympathetic for, you... Uh, you kind of hope she can get some peace and, you know, go to the light or whatever. But this little girl is hell-bent on blood, hell-bent on revenge, and hell-bent on destroying that entire community because of something that happened in her past and the past of those spirits she has surrounding her. She starts to make herself known to the son of this family. Uh, at one point, the father sees this evil child spirit uh, at his work site and something almost, <laughs> he, he almost bites it right there. A, a tragic accident almost befalls him while he's, he's uh, trying to chase her down, thinking it's a real little girl. And, and things just start happening that become more and more evil in her intentions. Uh, she doesn't even try to hide her intentions, this little girl. She just wants revenge. She is very, very... Uh, hell-bent on getting her blood, on getting blood for things that have happened to her in the past. And here's where the book gets interesting, because we get to go back in the past. We get to see her as a live human being, and we get to know the events that led up to her passing away, all the spirits that surround her, how they passed away, her family members, how they passed away, and it all has to do with this town that this community is located in, uh, during the time of the plague a long time ago there that uh, uh, this town did something to her and her community from a neighboring town that caused the deaths of her and her family and all of her friends and uh, everybody else in that community. And she swore, she put a curse and said one day she would return, she would seek her vengeance against anybody living in that community any relatives of those that did her harm, et cetera, et cetera. And she lives up to them that promise. Um, but here's the thing. All these stones in town are not merely historical or symbolic. They, are actually, they act as a barrier. Uh, as long as these stones are in place, her and her ghost uh, crew cannot cross that and do any harm to the people inside. But what this family doesn't realize is once, that, once the wife signed that document to become a trustee, she is a trustee for life. It's nothing you can quit. It's nothing you can just up and leave. And as these details come to life about what they're, that they're actually dealing with evil uh, supernatural forces that are out trying to kill them, uh, they can't leave. Because she signed her name, she's a trustee for life. Those spirits will follow her no matter where she goes, outside of the boundaries of those stones. They will find her and her family, and they will brutally and horribly uh, murder them. With great malice, I might add. So they're, now they're stuck, and they've been tricked, and she's been tricked into signing this thing, <clears throat> uh, thinking it was going to be just take care of the house, take care of the stone, you know, fit in with the community, that kind of thing. Uh, but we find out that all the rest of the board members, either through ancestry, through volunteering to be a trustee, or in this case through deceit, no matter what, once they sign that document, they are there and they are there for life. But of course, we have the stones. But at one point, something happens to some of these stones. An individual is manipulated by this little evil ghost girl and... Uh, once these stones start getting broken, once they start breaking down, the, the strength of the barrier between the living and the dead uh, starts showing cracks enough for these spirits to get through. And now it's a race to the death, basically. It's a race for survival for not only this family, but for everybody else in that community. Because if all those stones go, uh, there's, uh, the whole town is going to be nothing but one big bloodbath. And... Uh, because everybody else who's been a trustee who has decided to leave for whatever reason has died a horrific, terrible uh, death. And they will do the same to these people once those stones are broken. But this is a very, very well-told tale, part folk horror, I guess. 
and and uh, really part supernatural horror story and a very evil little girl. I mean, you don't feel really too much sympathy for her. Maybe during the parts where she's alive, you can understand, but uh, there's no compromise in her. You're not going to talk her out of doing what she's uh, uh, there to do. And you get the sense that these people are trapped. And if those stones start breaking away too quick and, or altogether, it's over for everybody. That makes for a very tension-filled, very horrific uh, situation. I love this book. Uh, the author did a great job. I, I love his prose. I love his, his style of writing. He kept me engaged throughout. And I truly, truly enjoyed every page of this book. I'll leave a link down below to Amazon if you want to pick it up from there. I highly recommend you do The Plague Stones. Uh, I'll also leave a link down below to my Twitter if you want to join me over there. I'd love to, love to see you, love to have you. Give me your book recommendations on there. I'd love to hear them. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, thank you for spending some of your time here with me. I really, really appreciate it. And until we meet again, keep reading spooky, my friends.